Welcome back to a new episode. My name is Stefan from openschoolsolutions.org and today we are going to talk about Limbo. Limbo is short for Linux Network Boot and it's like a mini operation system that Linux mostly uses to manage all your computers, laptops in your school. Here we have a graphic of Limbo, how it functions in detail. So every client in a Linux Mosfet network has a special partition table. So we have a partition for the first OS, maybe for a second OS, and maybe yeah, there's normally a partition for local data, and we have the Limbo cache partition. So when we have this client, we set up the client, install all the software and drivers and other things we need, and then we boot Limbo. And with Limbo, we can create a compressed image of the first or second OS partition. And this compressed image is then uploaded to the server. And when we boot a second client, we can download this image to the Limbo cache. And then the image is synced to the first or second partition. And so this is a way how we can um, deploy our image from one master client to many, many other computers in our school network without managing every client by itself. So with Limbo, we have like a self-healing uh, client computer because every time something is messed up, students messed up something, we can just boot Limbo or students can do by themselves and reset, resync the client and then they have a fresh client again. So this is even possible if the client is not connected to the network because the image is stored here on the Limbo cache file. If you log into our Linux Muster web UI for our global admin account, we have two um, options here under device management. First is devices and second is Limbo. We talk about devices first. We have two devices here, our firewall and server. And we can just add a new device with this button and define a room. This can be an actual room or a virtual one, up to you. So we give it a host name, PC01. And here we define a group. We will talk about that in a second. And then we enter our MAC address of this computer. And here we can define an IP. It has to be out of the network that we defined at the beginning. Like our network was 10.0.0.0 slash 20 and this is an IP of this network. Here we can define the role like classroom student computer or other roles but we leave it with classroom student computer and then we define here for Pixie Boot Limbo Pixie because this is what we want. Um, if you have a computer you want to manage by yourself but want to have an IP out of this network you can choose no Pixie but we leave Limbo Pixie. Good. Now we click Save and Import and our computer is imported into Linux Muster. Okay, import is done and we can see here that our PC01 is imported. Close. Now we have the group here, Xubantu, but we haven't defined the group yet. So we go to Limbo and here we can define our group. We click on create and here we have different um, yeah, sample configuration files for different options. If you want to have like dual boot windows with Ubuntu for BIOS clients or UEFI clients. So we choose to start.conf Ubuntu, give it a name, so Ubuntu. Okay. And then we can click on Xubuntu and define everything for our client computers. In general, a uh, section here, we have the server side as TFTP server to, for the network boot. We have the system type, you normally can leave it like this. And download type torrent is one good option. You can choose rsync or multicast, but torrent is fine. We have different options of what we want to do if we boot our clients. So we can set them to auto partition recovery, auto partition formatting, or auto update cache. Um, we just leave it like it is for the moment. 
And here, if we go to partitions, we can define how our hard disk should look like on the client after the partitions we talked about in the graphic, limbo graphic. First, you can define a disk type, SATA disk, NVMe disk, or another one. And for our Ubuntu, we have 30 gigabyte defined. We can go and edit here, make it bigger or smaller. Um, here you can select an icon for Limbo. And normally you select here the base image that we want to use for this partitions, but we don't have one, so we can't select one here. Okay, just make it yeah a little bit smaller. 25 is fine. Save, and then we go to cache. We don't need 30 gigabyte. 15 is fine. Save, and web is okay, and data is the rest. Save. Here we have our Xubuntu client one, and on network tab here we see it's an LMN network. Here we have our MAC address, and here on disk, if you go to boot order, we see it's set to network. Um, we can move this around and set hard disk first and leave it like it is. Save. Good. Now just let's boot this client and here we can see it looks for DHCP for an IP address. It got one and now Limbo is booted. It doesn't find the partitions yet because we haven't partitioned this client but Limbo is booting now. Okay, welcome to Limbo, initializing the hardware, downloading the configuration files. There are some errors because the mount points does not exist yet. Okay, Limbo is booted and we can see here's our host name, our group, IP address, MAC address, hard disk size and all the cache, but it's empty because it's not partitioned yet. We talk about partition in the next video. I want to show you a second way how you can register your devices because often you don't have the MAC addresses available and it takes a lot of work to write down all the MAC addresses of your computers and then enter them in the web UI. So there's a different way how you can register your client computers. We have a second Ubuntu client here that's not registered but it's in the same network, has a different uh, MAC address and we go to disk just quickly change our boot order, put hard drive first, save, and then we boot this um, second client and it tries to get an IP but hasn't got an IP yet. So now Limbo is booting. Now we can see here that we don't have a host name here, it just says Pixie client, and this because this client is not registered, no group it gets an IP out of the DHCP range. Here's the MAC address. We have the hard address. There's nothing to show here. Cache, nothing to show. So we can register this client if we click on Imaging tab here. And then we enter our password, our global admin password. And then we click here, time on. Okay. And here you have different options. Console, up to cache, partition and register. And if you click here on the last button, register, there's a dialog and you can see we can enter. It's also pre-populated. It's also filled out for us already. We have the room. This is the last one we imported. We have here another hosting. We can just put second PC02 and give it another IP address. This one is wrong. Just use this and here we have our group already populated. If it's the first time you do, well, normally it's empty, but you can enter your room, your host name, IP address, and the last one is the group. It's German, it's not translated yet, but you can press here on register. And now it uploads the information to our Linux Monster server. If we go back here to devices, we can now see that we have our second client computers already in the list. But it's in the list, but not import yet. So we have to click save and import. So it gets imported into Linux Monster.net database. Okay, done. We see one and two imported, close. 
And now we have both computers imported into Linux Muster and we can now reboot our client here, our second client. And then we should see that it's registered and has group information and the same what we saw now at DHP. Now it's booting again. It complains about the missing partitions. No problem, we will talk about that in the next video. Okay, Limbo is booting, initializing hardware and other stuff. Okay, and now you can see we have the host name, the group, the IP address, MAC address, and yeah, all done. That's it for today. We've learned how we can register our client computers in linuxmuster.net, either through the web UI interface or directly in Limbo. And in the next video, we talk about partitioning our client and starting to prepare our master client. Hope to see you soon. Please like this video and subscribe to our channel if you want to see more videos about open source software that you can use in your school.